Yes. Good evening, conquistadors and conquistadorettes. This is the glorified version of a Bassin talk show. I'm your host, Pat Remick, and I'm damn glad to be back here after a two-week hiatus. Hello, Bass Galaxy. Yes. Yes. Hello, I'm rested. I'm rested, and I feel good. I've been bassin'. Been to Leonardo DiCaprio's island. Had a great time. Everything is good. How are you guys feeling? Hello, Room. Hello, Andrew Ellenberger. Hello, Ginger Ninja. Hello, Jimmy. What's going on? Come on, boys. Kick it into gear. That's what I'm talking about. We got a big show tonight. I'm excited. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but uh, the whole thing is going down. That's Andrew Ellenberger. He's the Ginger Ninja uh, producing the heck out of this thing back there. Hello, Ginch. Hi. Hello. Yo, Pat. Hello, Jim. Yo, Pat's Galaxy. Hello, Jinch. Are you rested, Jinch? I'm rested. You've been catching fish? Trying to. Yeah, you won a derb. I know you've been catching fish. <laughs> you and old Shooter McGavin over there. Yeah. Congratulations Thank on you, that. Sir. Good job on the late shorts over there. It's good to be back, Jinch. Very good to be back. I but want you to share my excitement. I <laughs> share this with me. Yell at the top of your lungs. Uh, it's gosh dang good to be back. Yes, it is. Thanks. See how I backed off the mic a little on that? Thank you. Appre <laughs> the Bass Galaxy appreciates you. Uh, hey, and uh, Jimmy, I'm glad to have you here to work in the chat board uh, tonight. Uh, big, big show tonight. We have a whole new deal going on uh, for the first time ever on uh, SCTV here. We're going to go into the great wide opens. That's right. We're going to explore the Opens, uh, the Bass Master Opens. We've never really kind of delved in to that uh, sector. It's always been more elites. And uh, we're going to get into the Opens deal. And, uh, and Brad Leitner, he's uh, going to be your host for Into the Great Wide Opens. It's going to be a monthly segment. Uh, and tonight, we're going to kick it off and do a little, uh, you know, a little get to know Brad. And then we're going to also uh, bring aboard um, Bass Opens champ, uh, Cooper Gallant. Yes. Coop. It's Coop. It's all you need to know. It's like Prince. You say Coop. That's it. One word. Coop. Everybody knows. The artist known as Coop. And then uh, we have old uh, Brucey, Jamie Bruce, coming on the show. He's a legend. He's only been one dirt. Guy's a freaking legend. He joins uh, Brad Leitner, your uh, host. And I'm the co-host uh, tonight in this instance. So we're looking forward to that. Into the Great Wide Opens. It's a new segment on Stray Cast. It's a whole show tonight, but a future uh, uh, segment. And I'm looking forward to it. Here's the deal. Um, hey, uh, guess what? The whole... Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got you. I got you. I got you right there. Congratulations, uh, Bass Galaxy. Give it up to Lee Livesey. Give it up for him. His uh, back to backs on fork. There it is. TCB. That's what I'm doing right now. And uh, Sims, amazing job uh, to Sims uh, of, uh, of their uh, support of that Bass Nation event. Good luck to our boys at Pickwick tomorrow, especially uh, to our horses. In the race tomorrow at the old mighty Pickwick. Uh, speaking of derbs, uh, Cal Sag Bass Anglers had another derb. Uh, that's Dave Figley's league, CalSagBass.com. Uh, congratulations, Josh Sulkel, on your uh, wiver. Your wiver win. Your river win right there. It's good to see you out there, bud, and you did a great job uh, along with a bunch of the rest of the derbers out there. Um, while we're on derbs, I think we have to talk about Half a spot because uh, half a spot dot com. The half is yeah, there. It is. Hey, <laughs> it's time for half a spot. No, the half a spot app. Download it on your iPhone, on your Android, uh, wherever your app store is, and um, and check it out. Right now is the uh, Straycast month on the uh, half a spot. So um, go ahead and download the app. Enter the derbs boat bank. Uh, kayak, it don't matter. There's there's somebody something for everybody, and the whole deal is you get a chance if you win this thing to pick go fishing anywhere you want in the world. I don't know how to say it. You go fishing wherever you want if you win this half a spot there. But it's pretty crazy. 
Ginge, did you enter? Well, you're DQ'd. You can enter. Yeah. Jimmy, did you enter? Well, good. You know better. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be DQ'd. But you guys could, any, anybody, anybody except you guys can enter out there in the Bass Galaxy. Uh, half a spot official is the uh, application on your smartphones, and halfaspot.com uh, gives you the pathway to the apps. Um, download it, fish the derbs, get a chance to go fishing anywhere in the world. You got to bring me, though. I forgot to tell you guys that. If you win, you got to bring me. That's the catch 44 in the, uh, in the whole scenario. Um, all right. Hey, um, oh, a ton of pure fishing stuff just got into uh, omniafishing.com. If you're looking for deals on pure fishing, uh, go to omniafishing.com. Hey, Ginge, what'd you buy over there? What was that you got over at the Omnias? Uh, from the pure, the Max Sense you were getting. The flatworms? Oh, the flatworms. And the generals. And the generals. Okay. Yeah, I just stuck up. And yeah. then the uh, creature fog. <laughs> Shh. Okay. Yeah, don't. Yeah, you were. <laughs> we won't talk you, about that. Yeah, one. you got you. But before Claire, I know you were in a rush. You got some of that going uh, right there. Omnia Fishing has a, a, you know, a complete line of uh, Berkeley soft plastics. In in case you did not know, uh, moving along, check out the Crestliner Instagram page. Aura. That means now in Irish. Check it out, and uh, that will give you the key to uh, getting into John Cox's boat. If that means anything. Check it out. Uh, Crestliner Insta. With uh, that being said, Ginge, you ready for the party? You ready to par- start the party, bud? Is it time for a, a, little, uh, a little gypsy gyps? You know what I mean? Let's get it going. Let's take our whiskey to the straight cash show. Uh-oh. Ah, yeah. I'll take your whiskey home. Take it right to the straight cash show. Yes, with Courtney and the Whiskey Gypsy. Welcome back. Luke Foley. What's up, guys? Hey, hey, Courtney, guys. hi. It's been a while. What's going on? Yeah. How you been? Well, we were fishing tonight. We got chased off the lake by a rainstorm, so. I saw the I'm picture. Dra- I'm drinking. Yeah, go figure. Court, yeah, Court sent, me mm-hmm. the, uh, Court sent me the pictures. It looked like something wicked that way was coming. You know what I mean? And you guys, good that you guys got out of there, and you're nice and sound and safe right now. Yes. Yeah, I caught three keepers before we got off, but I I wanted to fish a little bit more, but yeah, I, I got outvoted. What was that? <laughs> creature hog, beaver, or a rodent? I couldn't tell in the picture of that that fish that I got sent. What was that, Court? What was the bait? Oh, I don't. She doesn't know. What I it's actually called. don't know. Yeah, see, I, I, I was thinking. Was, go ahead, Foles. It was a rodent. Oh. It, was, it was a rodent. Okay, I saw. I saw. I kind of saw those little deals on there. I, well, I couldn't quite tell. Yeah, from the picture. You All did fishermen. Really well, with those on that lake this year. Don't give my secrets away. Yeah. So there's something you have to know. I'm, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> the spot coordinates came out on that one. Uh oh. Anyways. Yeah. Any time. See, Courtney good sent. To see everybody. Yeah, Courtney sent pictures. You didn't even know it. I already got your spots, Foles. And I know the bait. <laughs> That's what happens when fishermen get sent um, pictures of fish. Or ladies, we blow those pictures up. That's just what mm-hmm. happens. I'm being yeah. honest. Don't know what to tell I you. did. I don't know if I told you. I sent a picture of his of his keeper too. Did I tell you that? You sent that pictures. Yeah, I did. Of course, I sent that. <laughs> All right, you guys. What the heck's going on over here? I, I mean, I hey, it's the tin cup whiskey word of the week. And for those that yeah. don't know. Every uh, straight cast broadcast, uh, Luke Foley and the lovely Courtney bring you a uh, straight cast tin cup whiskey word of the week. And when you hear that word, you take a sip of uh, tin cup whiskey, ice cold Coca Cola, Sprite, Mountain Dew, <laughs> whatever you choose. Hey, but whatever you choose, please drink responsibly. And tonight's tin cup whiskey word of the week. Luke and Courtney on this uh, Into the Great Wide Opens episode is what? What is it, guys? Opens. Opens. Hey, it's a party. Hey, Foley. Yeah. Yeah, it's a party. It's a, it's a freaking party. Those at home, you need to take like 10 sips already. Stay at home. Don't go anywhere else. Hey, and now we have two Canadians on the show tonight. And Canadians yeah. love rye. They yes, love, they do. Yes, Canadians <laughs> love yes, rye. They do. Yeah, yeah. And um, because of that, in honor of the uh, all Canadians everywhere and all Americans everywhere and everyone 
in the Bass Galaxy. Guess what, Luke? You are giving what? away the like and share contest tonight. You tin cup Whoa. whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see how that happened right there? Woo! That's how you do it, Ashley Schaefer. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> just, just, just DM me your name and address and shirt size. I'll take care of it. Yeah, we're going to give away a uh, swag pack and uh, maybe a little bonus bonus in there somewhere. But it's well worth your while. All you have to do tonight to win the tin cup whiskey prize pack is like and share this live Facebook feed. Like and share the live Facebook feed. Take it off a of private so we can put it in the randomizer at the end. And uh, we'll uh, we'll get you a tin cup whiskey prize pack out. Now, I, in regards to prize packs, I got to say we're catching up on past prize packs. So please be patient. We have all of your names compiled. Everything has gotten out. Uh, and you will be receiving your prizes. Right, right, Luke? I mean, I'm not... Yeah, saying, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> absolutely. I, I got a lot going on. Just DM me. I'll send it yeah. to you. <laughs> Uh, you know, you're running amazing. the fishing team. I gotta, I gotta, you know, keep Seth and Matt on track. The head didn't. Hey, you're good. I mean, you're a good time. Christine, folks. you're a good I'll time. Keep him up. I'll keep him up. I gotta deal with I this. Mean, my God, have you seen the front room? Yeah. Jeez. You guys are you. A lot of stuff. You guys are becoming <laughs> uh, uh, rapidly the Bass Galaxy's uh, favorite uh, bass and couple. You've been you've, oh, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, you've been referred to as the Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball of bass. Oh, really? Yes, I didn't know that. by me right now. Yeah, by for, my hair yes, red. for whoever got that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, like and share this live Facebook uh, feed. God. Yeah, it's amazing. You get a, a chance to win the tin cup whiskey giveaway tonight. We're going to announce the winner at the end of the show. The tin cup whiskey. Word of the week is opens. Uh, we got Coop. We got Brucey. We got Brad. We got into the great wide opens. First ever on Stray Cast, the glorified version of a bass and talk show. May I suggest that you put the power poles down in that crest liner? Hey, Pat. Hey, Luke. Can I say one thing? Can I say one thing before you do that? Of course. Our, our, good, our good friend, Jackie Shelley, Rock and Shoal Fantasy, yes. got hurt on yeah. the job. Yes. And broke his pelvis and some ribs. He did. And, you know, he's been a big supporter of the team, my team and my brand. And uh, I, I just hope everybody's thinking of him and I'm thinking of him. And, and Jackie, I sent you something. You're going to get it Friday. It's not flowers, but I think you know what to do with it. It's an elixir. Yeah. Very, thank yeah. you for bringing that up. And, I, and I, uh, I've been uh, uh, texting with J.R., uh, yeah, and he's actually gonna um when he's feeling better, you're gonna see a little more Jr. on Straycast uh, stuff. Yeah. Really good, yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's he's a great man. I I used to work construction. I got hurt a few times, and never as bad as what he did. And and uh, you know we're thinking of him. So he's a trooper. Yeah, but hey, absolutely. I told him when he comes back, he's gonna be able to slam dunk. Uh, he's gonna be able to uh, run a four minute mile. And uh, basically uh, catch twenty five pounds on every lake he goes to. So, uh, well, he's he's a tough son of a gun. Yeah. So, so he'll be all right. Hey, hey good. Uh, best of luck to you in the healing process. Our prayers are with you, Jackie. Yep. Uh, that's that's for sure. You and the whole fam. So, uh, that being said, uh, put the power poles down. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back at you and going into the great wide Bassmaster opens. This is the mountain, and this is mountain whiskey. Unspoiled, untamed, forever wild. There's no safety net, no way down. Up here, it's just man, and the mountain, and his tin cup. Tin cup whiskey. Mountain whiskey.
Kwiatkowski. to know the difference between power bait and other soft plastics? Ask the fish. Berkeley scientists have thousands of flavors tested on thousands of fish. Natural, man-made, every bait that's ever hit the water. No matter the shape, size, or color, power bait is the only one that is scientifically proven. Fish bite and will not let go. TH Marine HydroWave H2 KVD Edition is a surefire way to ignite a feeding frenzy. The HydroWave utilizes a sound emitting technology that imitates bait fish and other feeding fish below the surface that preys on the competitive nature of bass and other game fish to get you more bites. The HydroWave is another way that TH Marine has you covered from transom to trolling motor. All right, Bass Galaxy. Are you ready to get it kick started? Here we go. We're going to go into the great wide Bassmaster Opens. Give it up for your host now and host soon come. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Brad Leitner. Hello, Brad. That's you. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey, what's up, bud? You're from the Minnesota uh, headquarters, eh? Uh, yeah, I live a little west of the Twin Cities, live in the great state of Minnesota, full of mosquitoes and snow. <laughs> <laughs> mosquitoes and snow, those that's the state bird in the uh, in the state something. Slide yeah. your phone down a little, Brad, so we can see. Hey, Brad, you're getting your, yeah, there you go. Okay. Now we see, now we see all of your glory right there. Perfect. Wow. Well, dude, it's Perfect. good to have you here, Brad, and um, you are chasing the dream okay you're chasing that dream of becoming 
a Bassmaster Elite Series angler. Ray Scott's dream that he set forward, that he laid the pathway for, you're chasing it, aren't you? I absolutely am. I'm so excited to be here. You guys have such a great <laughs> show and everything you guys do for bass fishing is awesome. And he did lay the foundation for chasing the dream. And, you know, I'm hooked hundred percent. Yeah. And you know what? It's, it's not an easy road. These opens are like the wild west. It's crazy out there. It, it, it's just, it's a, it's just a montage of, um, speed bump after speed bump to get to the elites. All right. That's a perfect storm, Brad getting to the elites and you're living it. And that's why I chose uh, you to come on here and kind of, you know, give us the nitty gritty of this deal. Uh, it, <laughs> and, and you're going to give it to us here uh, monthly. So do, do you think, do you think the Bass Galaxy is ready for you or what? I sure hope so. I'm ready for that. <laughs> I like your attitude. You're ready for the bassin, that's for sure. You jump in uh, feet first to that. And uh, I like your uh, your first two choice of uh, guests, man, for this deal. I, uh, I, 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 I knew uh, a little bit about uh, one of the dudes and a, and a lot about one of the other guys. And I'm looking forward to learning a whole bunch about both of them. Yeah, they are some hammers in their own right. I mean, they they both rain from Canada, so they are smallmouth wizards for sure. Yeah, I noticed. And they uh, they're doing. I mean, Cooper Gallant's doing really well in the in the opens, largemouth, smallmouth, and Jamie Bruce is. I mean, his first ever event, he took third place, which is absolutely <laughs> mind blowing to me. But He's got a hell of an average. He's got a hell of an yeah. average. Yeah. He might as well quit right now because of the average will never get better. And and everybody would just be like, okay with that because they want him out anyway. They don't want <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, especially if we go to a smallmouth fishery. <laughs> hey, Gingy, how are we looking back there? With that being said, you ready to bring these characters uh, aboard the crazy train uh, that we know is Trey Cass? Should we do that, uh, Brad? Should we do that, Gingy? I think so. I mean, I'm ready. Uh, well, you guys are ready. I I'm ready. Uh, I mean, I've been waiting <laughs> for this deal right here, and I'm excited to have the, the whole crew on. These guys, it's, it's a, I can see him in the limelight. I see it in there. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I think I do. Oh, wait. Yeah. There, now I see them. They Good are, music. they are living in the limelight. The universal <laughs> dream for those who wish to see the bass master dream. That's right. Bass Galaxy, give it up for uh, the artist, one name, Coop and Brucey. Give it up for both of these guys, Cooper, Gallant, and Jamie Bruce. Welcome to Stray Cast, boys. How you doing, lads? Thanks, fellas. Happy to be here. <laughs> What's going on, Brucey? <laughs> oh, not much. I was just watching the show on uh, on my phone here. I'm, I'm happy to, to see that there's a minor delay just in case... Uh, we let a few things slip, you know, a live, live show is a little bit sketchy and it's just a little bit of a minor delay. I'm, I'm happy to see it and happy to be here. <laughs> hey, don't worry. Be yourself. That's why we call this the glorified version of a bass and talk show, because um, pretty much anything goes. We have just a couple rules. I mean, if you really need to, to lay the rules down, we don't make fun of um, Mike Ditka. Rick Klun or Jesus. Besides that, anything goes on this show. Anything Her goes. Game. Okay, yes. no holds barred. Yeah, it is barred. yeah. Coop, what are you doing? How you doing, Coop? Good boys. How are you guys doing? <laughs> you look so oh, relaxed. Wow. He looks so relaxed back there. I haven't left this chair all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the editor's seat. This is where this is where all the videos go down, and that's basically what I've been doing the last couple of days. So. Yeah, and uh, and and Brad, you assembled a uh, quite of uh, quite a group here. They're not hammers; they're more mallets. These uh, these guys are more mallets, you know. <laughs> they are. They are. 
they're catchers, no doubt about it. I mean, they <laughs> they get them. Yeah, as Gussie would say, they capture them. They're capturers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know it's good to have all three of you um here on stray cast and for a long time i'll be honest with you i feel that we have neglected the Bassmaster opens um we we have on this show and it's been pretty much elite uh focused uh as you guys know and and I start to see, like, I'm a fan of the sport. And, of course, I follow the Opens. I see everything that's going on there. And it's, I'm like, man, maybe uh, maybe we should talk about this and, and give the Bass Galaxy a different view of the Opens. And, uh, and that's what this whole deal is. And that's what Brad's going to do. You know, Brad's going to, Brad's going to, like, kind of pick the brains of you Opens, guys. Are you okay with that? What are you doing, Coop? Oh, there's see the light beam, or is that just on my end? I think it looks like that Omen movie, Damien. <laughs> get rid of it. Yes, I hope that nothing that n- no glass plates fall out of a truck or something. What is going on? <laughs> now you're underwater, Coop. Are you okay? I don't know. It's a roll that I tried messing with. It. I can't get rid of it. So, <laughs> Coop, the, let, let's let's rephrase that and say the angels are shining upon you. How do we like that? That's way better. Sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> I can live with it. <laughs> hey, but let's let's face this. You guys are all chasing the dream, right? You're chasing the dream. I'm not sure about you, Brucey. I haven't figured you out yet, but I know Coop. And I know that uh, that Brad are chasing the dream. I'm pretty sure you are too, Brucey. But uh, I mean, here's the thing: Ray Scott, God rest his soul, set out his vision for bass anglers. So, whatever your interpretation of that vision is, this sport of bass fishing, your place in that in this sport of bass fishing is Ray Scott's dream. And to me, in my opinion, the Opens are obviously the gate to most anglers' dreams, whether that's Elite Series Angler, whether it's just a Bassmaster Classic, um, whether it's AOI, whether it's all three. So does that make sense to you, Jamie, what I'm saying here? Yeah, yeah, I mean... I'm, I'm in a bit of a di- different situation than these guys are. I mean, they're fishing a bunch of them. I'm sitting on the waiting list right now. I had planned on doing the Southerns and, you know, I, I didn't make her into to the one in Florida. So I, I was on the waiting list and I got the call a couple of weeks before Cherokee and got to go down, uh, you know, knowing full well, I had no chance at qualifying for the elites or the classic because of, you know, the, the structure of it. Um, but I'm looking at them like, I'm 33 years old. My hair's going gray. You know, I should be kind of settling down and I've got an opportunity to pay a a modest entry fee to go fish against, you know, the best in the world. It's like if there was a big pond hockey tournament and Wayne Gretzky was there and you could pay 50 bucks to go play against Wayne Gretzky, you're going to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would love to, to get in them. It's like winning a radio contest to get in them. Uh, you know, as you know, you were the hundredth caller. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Um, Jamie Bruce, you won. You got a ticket to the Cherokee Opens and Bassmaster Opens. Come on down. Hey, first time caller, Jamie Bruce. Welcome to the show. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I, I'd love to keep going with them, but you know, if, if it ends right here for me and, and I don't get into any more then at least I, you know, I've got a story to tell and I got to go, you know, play with the, the top dogs for a bit. Yeah, I mean, I sure hope it doesn't end here. Very impressive, very impressive. Your your first derp, dude, and a uh, third place finish uh, on Cherokee in like eighteen k. Not too not too bad for uh, getting the call. Call the yeah, action. Thank- and hey, I did get one more thing with that. I got to point out, I've got the lowest credentials of anyone to ever be on Stray Cast. You know, <laughs> bronze medal in a Triple A tournament, and I'm on, uh, I'm on, you know, Wayne's World of Bass Fishing. So <laughs> thank you, uh, thank I, you. I'm milking this thing for all it's worth. <laughs> hey, but you're, kind, I mean, I'm not gonna kid you, man. You, you're, I don't, I don't know too. You're one of the guys I didn't know too much about, but I do know you're a legend uh, over in Kenyatta. And uh, there's a lot of people that uh, 
look up to your prowess. Do you know what I'm saying there, Bruzy? Well, I, I mean, legend's a big word. I'm certainly not that, but I, I am from a place. We're in a, a small area in northwestern Ontario. I'm 22 hours by vehicle away from where Cooper and the Johnstons live. I'm over in Gussie country. Yeah. And it's just a small population. And it's, I describe it as the mystery Alaska of bass fishing. Okay. There's these huge open team tournaments, you know, 150 boats, three dayers, big mega derbies for, for big money. And, you know, I don't know how they landed here, but it's, uh, it's just a small bass fishing community and it is stout. It's, you know, there's a lot of good anglers. It's not like I'm a standout here. Um, you know, the Gussie's down here and then there's, there's 10 more that are all, all, you know, kind of on mallets. that same level. All mallets. Yeah. The, mallets. I like that word. The, the, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm more of a muffin, but <laughs> we'll work up to a mallet. More of a chip hammer. But the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but for real, Jamie, I mean, when I say, let me clarify legend then maybe so your mind can grasp it a little more. You've taught a lot of people how to catch sure. fish through certain techniques and, and, and different, People have caught fish because of you, and that makes you a legendary status when that happens. So whether I you like that. whether you like it or not, hey, you do like it. Okay, great, good. Yeah, okay. yeah I like that. I'm into like that. that. <laughs> I like it. Hey, um, and uh, Coop, um, may I formally and publicly uh, on the Stray Cash Show congratulate you, Bass Opens champion <laughs> Cooper Gallant. Wow! It. Wow! Thank you. Wow. How you like how that sounds? Champion. Sounds pretty awesome to be honest. It still, <laughs> has, it still hasn't hit me yet. It's weird. I don't I don't think about it a whole lot to be 100% honest and uh but I know the second I I get down to the Tennessee River it's going to start hitting me but yeah, it's crazy. Still can't believe it. Yeah, and and congratulations on being a textbook champion by interpreting seasonal behaviors of smallmouth bass your victory is in direct correlation with your understanding of smallmouth behavior and 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 hats off hats off to you bud i mean congratulations coop i I think all your peers here will say phenomenal job on that thanks guys i appreciate it big time yeah you 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 did well bud you did well and it's good to have you here on this show so happy to be here i i watch you guys Every time you're on pretty well, if I'm, if I'm not fishing and I enjoy watching the show and I'm super stoked to be on here today. Cool. And if I may tell everyone, one of my favorite things about you, Coop, is when I first met you, you told me, you're like, hey, Pat, I didn't even like you at first. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) and I'm like, I freaking love this guy. You know? <laughs> but no, but I'm glad you kind of like me a little bit now, and you're on the show at least. So, no, I I love the show, man. It's different. It's <laughs> it's uh, you're not your average average show, and that's what I like so much about it. Hey, I got to ask you, since you're kind of like a poster boy right now uh, for for the opens, um, hey, give me a definition of the Bassmaster Opens in 2022 a definition or a description from you Coop. or a description yeah of the of the opens of this present day opens can you give me I one word tough uh, tough i mean <laughs> i think so uh, yeah. i i think so um tough may be an understatement um yeah. so between the good competition and all the boats that uh Makes things very hard, and I feel like it's it's super hard to do. But I mean, like we're having like 240 anglers out on the lake, and some of these bodies of water, it's just like Oneida, for example, our, our next event, it's gonna be it don't fish that big. And I think that's probably the toughest thing about the opens is all the anglers on these on these smaller lakes. 240 boats? Is that what you just said, Coop? Yeah, I think 225 or Two, 230. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah that's 225. A- 225. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot, man. I mean, and, uh, and especially everybody is chasing the, uh, the same dream. What's the name of your, your YouTube thing is the, the, the chase, right? The chase. The yep. chase. So yeah. Yeah. Just film documented all. And yeah, you're chasing Ray Scott's dream, aren't you, bud? 
Oh, the Elite Series chase. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, think about that. That there was one dude. Brad, think about this. Jamie, think about this. Coop, think about this. Ray Scott, sitting around. He's like, hey, man, bass fishing's a sport. Let's have derbs. Let's fish for money. Let's compete. Let's get competitive. Let's kick our buddy's ass and go out and win a bunch of money. And, hey, maybe people can even make a living doing it one day. You know what I mean? Grasp that. Grasp that because that's what all you guys are doing. You're chasing a needle in a haystack right now. But it's beautiful. It's freaking beautiful. You know what I mean, Brad? Yeah, I just got chills when you said that. Absolutely. And especially at the time he was doing it, people fished back then to eat. They didn't fish for fun. So, yeah. I, I mean, unbelievable what he accomplished. I mean, and, and how it evolved in to let's just say it really a freaking cool sport like when i was a kid bass fishing really wasn't cool like i mean like it, it, it might have been like i was kind of hiding a bass master in school you know what i mean yeah. like maybe if i had sports illustrated it'd be all right but i kind of like, tucked away that bass master a little bit. I was probably the only fifth grader who even knew who the hell Ray Scott was in my school in the North. And here you guys are chasing that. Jamie comes out, he almost qualifies in one damn derb for Ray Scott's dream. Pretty good. <laughs> hey, I've got something to throw in there about Ray Scott. I would um, love it. Please do. While we're here. Yes. So I, I was doing a little, uh, you know, research on a little piece for, for my own little podcast. And, and I was looking at, you know, Mr. Scott's, Mr. Scott's history. And, um, he, you know, I mentioned earlier, we have this small community and somehow these massive derbies are here. Well, like 40 years ago, he had a bass federation tournament up in soon arrows, Ontario. Okay. There's, there's a whole old school video. He's in the cowboy hat. Really? Um, full tournament here. Yeah. You got to watch the video. Um, Can you send it to me? Oh, I'll send it to you. Okay. So, it, I mean, it was crazy. There was, a, you know, he was doing his Ray Scott thing, putting on the spectacle. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know if, if there were tournaments around before then, but that certainly amplified things. Um, and, you know, there was one guy that obviously that lots of these guys haven't seen Muskie before and they're loaded up here and every all everyone was doing was chucking spinner baits didn't matter if they're clean water dirty water small mouth large mouth it was just a spinner bait derby that's awesome and so they're they were cracking a few muskies and one guy uh crushed a big 50 incher and uh he was so fired up he just beat it over the head with the net threw it in his rod locker and he brought it to weigh-ins <laughs> Bass federation stage <laughs> <laughs> right uh, over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes it's that kind of party bud yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean you know ray scott's legacy is is not just limited to uh to the u.s he's you know he's he's left a an imprint up here and um you know i'll be forever grateful because i don't know what else you know we'd be doing if we weren't uh chasing the bass dream even around here yeah i mean for real and and you know uh, obviously it's been a, a very successful dream to chase for guys like the Johnston brothers. And of, of course, Gussie, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, it's a very tangible dream yet still a needle in a haystack. W with that being said, I ask you, Coop, you're, you're a step closer. You're going to the Bassmaster classic, bud. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty freaking special. So, I mean, what is your ultimate dream? Coop, tell me, what is your Bassin dream? My ultimate dream is to make the elites. Um, yeah, that's that's it. I like doing a lot of stuff behind the camera, either the elites or have my own TV show. And and throughout the season, fishing the opens, that's, to be honest, Classic wasn't even on my mind throughout this year, up until, of course, when I was going into day two in a top 10, I knew how to shot, but the whole goal for me and the whole dream is 100% the elite series. And, and then, uh, everything that goes with it, <laughs> everything that goes with it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Pretty cool, man. Hey, Brad, how yeah. you doing over there? I'm doing wonderful, Pat. Yeah, you look really good, by the way. Your beard is looking exquisite, but yeah, yeah, it's looking formed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to talk about money. You guys want to talk about money? Because money, sure. yeah, yeah, and that's why uh, that's why I bring this uh, bring this about to to Brad because I want to start with him. The when it, the part of chasing this dream. But it's very difficult, guys, is the financial part of it, okay? It's all glorious. We just talked about, you know, about chasing the dream and the glory that comes and Coop's going to the classic and, and, uh, and you know, and you want to be an elite and Jamie comes out and kicks ass and won Derb and Brad's had some good Derbs and, and, and is on his way too and making more progress. But the, the, the fact is it's very pricey. It's very pricey to fish this <laughs> deal, dude. So, Not only financially, it's pricey on everything. I mean, your family life, your I mean, most of us all have jobs, so it's kind of takes a toll on that. I mean, it's pricey all the way around the board. But I mean, you got to want it, you got to love it, and you got to see the end result, you know. So, do you know how like, I don't know if it's the animal in me or not, but when I first take a bite of nice rare steak, you know when that blood kind of drips down a little bit, you know what I mean? And I just can't not help but take another bite. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm a carnivore. I'm a carnivore at heart. And I think that, I think that winning money in a bass tournament is the same way. Once you get a little bit of prize money in your paqueta, you uh, you keep going. You know what I mean, Coop? It's like a drug, man. It's not only the, the tug of the drug of the fish, as they say, but it's also that let's go to the bank and cash that check. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, even those times when you, when you don't cash a check and you're this close to cashing a check makes you want to get out there and put in more work to cash a check and then if you win one you want to win another one 10 times more than the first one so yeah it's, it's like a drug the more you uh, the more you win and the more you come close the more work you want to put in to do better and, and how old are you coop you like 24 5 something like that 22 22 jeez i had you way older yikes <laughs> okay and you hey but hold, you've been fishing derbs for like eight or ten years or something like, like 13 or something ain't it i'm not 22 i don't know why i said that. i'm 24 holy <laughs> wait, what is going on here come on Coop. hey wait no, no. <laughs> andy cut that part out and let's redo this first part right here <laughs> so coop you're 24 right yeah, 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 so we yeah, cut that other part out. Yeah, and you've been fishing okay. tournaments for about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah, I, started, I started when I was 13. Yeah, so you're no stranger to it, you know, and neither is Brad. Like, Brad's been Durbin a long time. Brad, I want you to go back to 2002. Columbia, South Carolina, Bassmaster Opens, 34th <laughs> place, 1400 bucks in your pocket. Remember that? I do. Like it was yesterday. I had a, <laughs> it was a unique deal. Like I was way out of my element and just, uh, I drew an awesome co-angler. I actually drew Cliff Pace. Oh, as a wow. So luckily he had some fish to go to and we caught a few and yeah, it was, it started back then. And shortly after then I had a daughter and I kind of had to do the home life work make money and now the kids are all old enough so it's back to my turn chasing the dream yeah and and i mean i can relate too i mean i kind of got into this i've been in the bass industry uh most of my life but i kind of got into the game full-time heavy after my daughter was grown because i was able to you know what i mean and you're kind of doing the same thing and uh you had a you had a great uh well you were six at the james river this year is that right Yep, yeah, yep. and heck of a sick. finish. Yeah, it was a good deal. That place cost me the leaps last year, so I was kind of had some vengeance back on it. Yeah, and uh, but, yeah, you were you were there. I saw the horns out. I saw you. Uh, the bleed was red. You were eating the steak. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> I was. Yeah, it was good. I mean, those top, those top tens and the opens, no, you can't really explain it unless you've been there. I mean, it, it's, it's something real special and it makes you hungry. I mean, super hungry. And I'm just sad we have such a long break until July, but. Well, you better you better start doing push-ups in the parking lot, Brad. <laughs> I stayed with Matt Robertson on the way down to Tennessee. Oh, and we were no. For, we were training for some wrestling, but uh, I I don't think I'm strong enough to wrestle. So, And I'm too old. I don't want to hurt myself. Don't wrestle Matt. <laughs> Leave he him vol- alone. Yeah. Brad volunteered me to wrestle Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and we went for breakfast, and I met Matt for the first time. Um, and you know, Brad mentioned the wrestling thing and Matt looked up and down me and he's just like, Brucey, I'm sorry, man, but Caleb Sumrall will kick the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say anything about wrestling him. He just sized me up to Sumrall. Uh, yeah. So. He was already, he's Sumrall's manager apparently already. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. I wouldn't mess with you, Brucey. You're, yeah. Yeah. I mean. And nobody, I would if I was Caleb Sumrall. Yeah, and the only time Matt's allowed to uh, wrestle is in a cage match. No more wrestling. It's going to be it's a pay per view event if it goes down because the risk of injury can be detrimental to all involved. So we won't allow that to happen. <laughs> enough, enough of that being said. <laughs> so hey, let's um let's count your guys' money. You want to do that? Let's do that because uh, opens anglers spend a lot of money. You know what I mean, Coop? You're laying it out. I mean, Coop, you just, that credit card's just going, toing, 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 you know, I mean, you know the deal, but you just, <laughs> you just want a bundle, but you're spending a bundle, but you're going to yeah. love what I have to say right now. I'm going to give you some scientific, mathematical, um, nuts and bolts facts right here. We probed Ronnie Moore viciously for this information. It was a vicious probe of Ronnie Moore. And we were able to get some outstanding and amazing facts about all three of you gentlemen. Do you have any probing music, Ginge? Anything that sounds probish? Like Whoa. Ronnie Moore probe music. <laughs> <laughs> so get this, Brad, you uh, in your Bass Master Opens career. Uh, Oh, this is sad music. That's okay. I like it. It's kind of like Game of Thrones. Brad Lesnar, I would like to talk to you about your average earnings in this vast galaxy and into the great wide opens. So, so far, 10 derps, bud. And uh, you, uh, you've won 21,925 bucks. What do you think? That's actually inaccurate. It should be nine. I bailed out of one. Well, okay, whatever. Okay, so whatever. nine. It's okay, not very I don't. Yo. That that doesn't matter. What matters here is is the dinero, the buku, yeah. de, the buku de lores, as they okay. would say. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, and you won uh, roughly twenty one, twenty two k. Okay. Kay. All right. That's not bad. Okay. It's not bad. Now you have caught. 218 pounds of bass in these nine derbs. All right? So here's yeah. what I got to tell you. Ginger, you ready to hit him with the best shot? Fire away. Calculating. Each bass that you catch, Brad Leitner, is worth $100.57 a pound. Wow. wow. So every time you're out there, you tell the missus, too, every time you're out there, you're swinging a four, it's 400 bones. You know what I mean? All I right. like it. You're swinging a four on the okay. deck. It's 400 bucks. Now, look at you laughing over there, Coop. You're going to be real happy. You're going to be real happy when you hear this. I bet. What I got to say to you. The uh, All right. Now, get this. Coop, you, you're doing really, really damn good because you got a W. You got a big dub in there. So, uh, Coop, you uh, in your eight tournaments, you've uh, you finished four times in the money. You're batting 500. It's not bad. If this were uh, America's sport, it is America's sport. Is baseball or bass fishing America's sport? I think it's bass fishing. Bass yeah. fishing. Yeah, bass fishing, of course, Brad. I agree. 242 pounds, Coop. You've caught a bass in these, in these uh, eight derbs. You know what you won? You know your winnings at BASS? Do you know that in your brain, sir? 
not my brain, no. Okay, it's seventy one thousand eight hundred and forty three dollars. Okay, seventy one thousand eight hundred and forty three bucks, um, and two hundred and forty two pounds, and that means every bass that you swing aboard the coop train is worth two hundred and ninety six bucks a pound. What? Hey. Holy shnikes. A four's like 1,200 bones, bud. That's pretty cool. Kid gloves. Every fish, treat it with kid gloves because it's worth <laughs> mega. We're mega. Now, here's the true shooting star of the, all three of you guys. The rest of you guys ought to just go home because here's, <laughs> here's the guy with the average. It's, it's Jamie Bruce, and this guy is one derb, okay? One derb, he got 34-7. Uh, he caught. He won seventeen thousand eight hundred and forty bucks. Uh, next time you get a phone call, every bass you catch, uh, Jamie, is worth five hundred twenty-four mm-hmm. bucks a pound. Best average ever on the Stray Cast Show. Talk about credentials! You just blew everybody on this show out of the water. Ever. ever I like it. Ever. I like it. <laughs> ever. Hey, what you're not saying is thirty uh, uh, percent tax on the top <laughs> for Canadians. That's immediate and. Uh, Two thousand dollars in fuel travel expense. So whatever, Debbie Downer. Hey, somebody's got to be I'm a carrier. I'm, <laughs> I'm not complaining. I like it. I like that number. And I was hoping you'd rile that up. <laughs> I listen to this show every week, and I, I love the money part. Well, thanks. It's five hundred and twenty-four. It is a record on SCTV. That is a record, dude. You knocked it out, and you were the one like undermining or belittling your credentials. And uh, here you are, holding the record. Like, you stand well, next to the prestigious, like, um, Brandon Palahniuk and James yeah, I like that. Yeah. I'm they, just a fanboy, so yeah, I shouldn't be holding, right. holding I, I, the record. I, I don't know. You are you're, uh, you did pretty damn good, and uh, and you're pretty damn good at holding that minnow in front of Bass's faces, too. So <laughs> we'll, talk, <laughs> we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. But, but seriously, sure. like... All you guys are mallets, right? You're opens mallets, if you think about it. When you look at credentials that way, um, chasing that dream. Brad, what do you think of all this so far? I'm doing all the talking. I have a trouble not talking. You're doing great, Pat. I mean, it's going well, I think. <laughs> well, th- <laughs> well, th- well, thanks. You, can't, you care if I go to the bathroom and you just take over for a while? I'll come back in like 25 minutes, 30 minutes or something. I might go down the street, go to Dollar General. I don't know. Wendy's for a Frosty. You want a Frosty? Okay, I'll get us one. Yeah. I've. Do you remember? Uh, sorry to cut you off, Brad. I, no, I go. Got us. No, we're you we're on the topic of Frosties here. Please so. go. Please go. Uh, Frosty. Dustin Bufflin and I were fishing a small fall tournament one day. We were talking about you and your show. You know, we're both <laughs> we're both fans. And I love Buff. L- yeah. Well, yeah. L- later, I feel like I kind of introduced you guys yeah. inadvertently. Okay. Well, but thank you. L- so later, later that night, uh, you know, we were having a few sociables with Gussie, and we got him to, you know, drunk dial you. He Facetimed you. Yeah. And I, I remember. And we busted you going through Wendy's. Yeah. And you had seven Frosties. I did. Yeah, I had a lot of them. Yeah. I, I can't seven remember. Seven bucks worth of Frosties, and <laughs> only two were for someone else. <laughs> no, I mix them up. I have a whole uh, method to my madness. So if you really want to get into the Frosty method, so I get the little ones, right? Not so it's don't, so don't be thinking they're giant ones, but I make the little ones into a giant one. So the combination is you take two vanillas, two chocolates, and then Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries. You mix them in a big cup with um, Nestle Strawberry Quick, and then you got the uh, Frosty Mega Shake. Does anybody want to argue with me about that deliciousness? Coop, go ahead. That sounds pretty delicious. Yeah. I could go for one of those right now. Yes, thank you. Treat yourself to glory, everyone. Do it on me. <laughs> I like it. I'm gonna try it. I'm hey, try but it. I love Buff, uh, and uh, thank you for thank you for that. And I'll never forget that uh, when uh, Buff, uh, you know, drunk dialed me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we had some good laughs over that. Yeah. It, hey. Um. No. And Buff. Buff's an amazing dude. And and hey. Um. I am honored that uh, Buff turns down the Chicklets uh, podcast yet comes on here. So yep. uh, I uh, think that's a big deal. You know what I'm saying, Coop? 
Where'd Coop go? No, what are you saying? Oh, there's Coop. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Uh, there he is. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's not a big media guy, so <laughs> to have him on here is uh, is a is a big feat. But, even though he just chirped you the whole time. Oh, dude, it was it's amazing. <laughs> See, I love that though. I don't get that. So when I get a bud on that does that, it's great. And I love hanging out with Buff and enough about this, but hanging out with Buff and Nate the man in in uh, what's uh, Nate? That's his name, Nate, right? Yeah. Nate's, yeah. Nate's yeah. amazing. Like, I, I even, lent him my boat once and he wrecked it. I don't even know what <laughs> Nate does. He just comes out of like all of a sudden he won't be anywhere and they're like, holy shit, Nate's here. And I'm like, where'd he come from? I don't even know. He appears out of thin air. He's a shapeshifter, but he's the man. <laughs> hey, there's a gateway to these Bassmaster Opens. Okay. And um, the gateway to the Opens is whatever an individual angler chooses it to be. Now, let me explain myself. Um, it's whenever you are ready to make the jump. You know what I mean? You have to feel in your mind as an angler that you can actually go there in an open and compete against Gerald Swindle, Lee Livesey, Brandon Polonic. All these guys. Like, there's a jump in your mind. So with that being said, Brad, I ask you, where was that jump in your mind where you're like, that's it. I know I've done you were you done well on the champion circuit, right, Brad? Um yep. and then what's the one that you guys uh fish on uh Tonka all the uh, time? Uh the Denny's. Denny's. Uh, the Denny's. Yeah. yeah. It, just... I mean, so what was in your what was where was the turning point for you, Brad? Where's like enough is here local? I have to go now and do it. Where was it? I think a, a bunch of things played into it. I think one being bored around home was a big deal. And then seeing Seth and Austin have the success definitely like, I mean, I grew up fishing against those guys and they didn't take my money all the time. So I'm <laughs> like, well, it's, uh, and then I had back surgery. So I laid in bed for like months oh, and I wow. watched every Bassmaster on YouTube. And I'm like, I can do that. So, I mean, you still at this point, I don't know if I can do that, but you go and have success and it gets a little bit, you know, your mind changes a little bit. So, okay. And how do you feel about your performance as an individual in the open so far? Uh, it's, it's good. I mean, I'd like to see, I'd like to see a little more checks involved. And <laughs> I'd like to, you know, compete for a win once and then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited what has transpired. I mean, I've fished, you know, besides 22 years ago, I fished six, six opens. Now I've cashed three checks, two top tens. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, but I know there's a lot of work to be done yet. You know, it's, you're always working on it and trying to figure out how to get one step ahead. So. Okay. And, and, and you made the leap and there you're here now. And you're fully dedicated. That's, I mean, like, how old are you, Brad? I'm way too old. I think I'm like 43. <laughs> okay. I know I lost track too, but I, I get it. So you're not, I mean, you're, you're not too old by any means, but you're, you're 43 years old and you're both feet in. Both freaking yeah. feet in. Yeah. You have, I mean, it's either do it now or never. And the one good thing I do have a lot of experience. I've been fishing tournaments locally for 20 years, competing for championships, winning championships, winning lots of derbs. And, you know, just, I think the experience has helped me along. You know, you just, you've seen so much more than most. I mean, Cooper's just a kid. I mean, it's unbelievable what he's done so far, but yeah. And that's all Coop knows is fishing. Like, I mean, Really, I don't. That's all I know of you knowing, Coop. Is that fair to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'd be doing if I didn't fish. Um, all I do, it's like wake, go to bed, thinking about it. Wake up, thinking about it. Yeah, you'd be like those <laughs> special dogs that just bump into the walls. You yeah. Know? <laughs> the, the <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's my life. Dude, and I mean, and you've been doing this 
uh, as we said, you've been fishing derbs for like 10 years since you've been 13 years old. But like where I know you did. You, you fished some grade school derbs. You did high school derbs. Went on to the to the college scene. Fished some FLW stuff, I think, too. You may have. Um, and and what was the point where, like, all right, I'm doing this opens. I'm going into the opens. I'm going to be an elite. Where was that? Was that the, the two years ago point when you just popped in? Yeah, so growing up, like, I fished through the, like you said, the high school and junior stuff through the Bass Nation and – and then I, I decided to hop in the FLW Costas three or – that would have been four years ago now. And at the time, I didn't know if I was going to be able to compete. I wasn't sure because I had never done it before. Hopped in. I had a pretty good year on the Costas. And then bass has always been, for me, there's always been a special place in my heart with, with Bass Nation and Bass Master. Sure. So I decided to fish the Opens the next year. And – uh yeah, I had a pretty good year. My first year, I just did the Northerns. Um, I almost made it that year. And and then that was probably the year I started to realize, maybe I can do this. I don't know if I'm going to, but I don't want to regret anything down the road. I'm going to give it my all, fish my butt off, and see if I can make it. And and another big thing, too, was seeing Chris and Cor and, and Gussie. Like, I look up, like, I'm buddies with all three of them now. And I still look up to them like crazy and seeing them down there and not just getting by, but they're, they're absolutely killing it. And they're, they're straight up catching them. And yeah, they're capturing. Yes. Hey, you want, may may I stop you a second? I want to tell you something pretty cool. Um, whether you want to hear it or not, they kind of look up to you as well. No, God, no. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, take that for what you will. I know what facts are. So they, they, uh, they, they look up to you somewhat too, man whether you know it or not. So. But no, that's been a, they've been a big part of my motivation and, and going to the States and trying to make this happen is just seeing them and watching their success 100%. And here's the thing that you'll notice about any success achieved in bass fishing. Okay. Um, your, your Canadian brethren is a perfect example. Brad, your, your buddy Seth is another great example. Okay. Until and no matter what phase of the sport you're in, whatever, um, Coop, I don't care if it's if it's uh, YouTube and Jamie, you you know whether it's the Get the Net podcast or your YouTube channel, unless you are fully in, you aren't in. Okay, you in order to achieve success in bass fishing, whatever avenue it is, both feet have to be in, or you're not going to achieve success. Look at it historically and prove me wrong, okay? I ask that. Yeah. It's got to be. It's all in, man. It's all in. Now, again, comes, like in your guys' instance, all in could, is all in three events? Is all in nine events? Is all in, like, okay, I know you, you got called in, Jamie, but I mean, like, mm-hmm. for example, what, in your opinion, um, what is all in, Jamie, if it was ideal? Is it every single division of the Opens? Is it? I mean, I, I would call that all in. Yeah. Um, and there's really, I mean, I, I, I can't speak from that perspective because I, I'm i not all in. I was going to fish three because I could, you know, make it work uh, in financially and, and um, you know, with my full-time job and everything like that. Um, but uh, there's if you want it, there's really no excuse to not go all in. I mean, people have proven it before. So I, I, six is an unreal amount and nine is like unfathomable, but (laughs) obviously that, that is all in that's living and breathing it. That's, you know, uh, if, if you're not from the silver spoon and not one person on this podcast is, um, that's, that's putting everything on the line and, you know, working your ass off in between so yeah uh, what these guys are doing is is you know it's a mega grind and i mean even even the the end of the road is not going to be glorious but uh you know if, if you love something enough then uh it, it, people have proven it's achievable uh and yeah, everyone's got a pretty wild story about coming up so um 
you know, uh, I hopefully I can go all in one day, but <laughs> I'm uh, I, I'm not right now, so I'm I'm not the best guy to ask about all in. Well, no, Cooper but you you have an opinion, Bradder. yeah, but you have an opinion on it, and that's what I asked. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you are the best guy to ask because I wanted your opinion on it, okay. and and you're diving into the industry. Do you have a regular job, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, I have I have a full time job. Um, not that bassing ain't a regular job. I I mean we all work at this, but yeah, what do you do, yeah. Jamie? What do you do? Uh, I work uh, in the intelligence community, so it's uh, you know I, I've got a different job in that regard. And and prior to that, I pretty much since I was eighteen, I, I uh, you know worked in in a prison. Nice. Well, thank um, you for so, getting rid of those files for me. I appreciate that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yes. I I you know I used to work a lot of night shifts and would just not sleep and go fishing, work night shifts into tournaments. And I mean, maybe you could consider that all in too. Um, but yeah, I, ha- I haven't slept a whole lot over the years. And, um, you know, I, I love fishing enough that I can totally float all this industry stuff as, as a second job and pretty much just survive off, uh, off passion and coffee, but we'll see, it might come to an end here at some point. And you- like I said, I'm already gray and I'm 33. <laughs> you don't got much longer left, Jamie. Better live it up while you can. <laughs> hey, how many are you? How many uh, opens are you in, Coop? You in nine? I'm doing all nine this year. Yep. Okay. And you too, Brad? No, I'm only in six. Six. If I don't make it this this year, nine's on the agenda next year. Okay. Now, how much does it cost to fish nine opens as far as entry fees? alone it works out to be about twenty one thousand canadian if i'm not mistaken so that's only four dollars american it'd be sixteen thousand two hundred oh, us yeah oh yeah what is that mr sixteen thousand two hundred us 16? for entry fees alone oh for nine events yeah nine times eighteen hundred nine times yes yeah okay yeah gotcha okay so um certainly attainable but certainly not cheap um to be all in and then of course you know then you got to add fuel at eighteen dollars and seventy (laughs) six cents a gallon at least and then you got to add in fish location presentation system that's going to take a little bit of time too um, and, uh, then you're burning lots of gas doing that. Cause everybody knows that, uh, 10, uh, 10, 90% of the fish only live in 10% of the lake. Right. That's what Al Linder taught us. So now we're just burning gas and we're all in and now we're at 50 K. What do you think about that, Brad? That sounds horrible. Pat. I know, Just but we're chasing the dream. We're chasing the dream. We're sacrificing. This is our dream. And then all, oh, we got no money left. And then all of a sudden we win 57 K and come in first place at Cherokee and everything's peachy and we're smiling and we got rosy cheeks and white teeth. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's that crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. And what's even crazier is you can, like, yeah, it's so expensive. Like you just said, you can win win a big derb and and be on cloud nine. And then the year after, like that that money, it's, it goes quick. When you start spending gas and you start paying all these entry fees and then we do a bunch of derbies back home. And it's, at the end of the day, it's it's really it's really not that much. If you got to kind of almost make sure you keep one winning derbies or, or at least cashing checks here and there, because if you're not, it's, it's super hard. I mean, yeah, just entry fees alone is ridiculous. And then you add gas on that, you're looking at probably $50,000 a year. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe you just won next year. You got lucky and won next year, Coop, is what you did. The ability to fish next year. Although, you know what I'm saying? Of course, that's, you know, you know what I mean. I mean, there's, but a lot of people are not going to have that, that opportunity. You know what I mean? You know, you might like before that, I think you guys are averaging, you know, you know, anywhere from eight to fifteen hundred a year in winnings. So, you know, I'm sorry, eight thousand to fifteen thousand a year in winnings. Yeah. Um, So that's quite a it's quite a bit. But anything helps. Anything helps, obviously. So do you guys associate with a lot of other 
opens competitors. Do you feel it's a pretty tight knit group amongst you guys chasing the dream? What do you think, Brad? Do you is it a tight knit group? You hang out with a lot of. I honestly, not really. Okay. I mean, I've met a few really nice people. I've met some people through staff like Matt and Ryan New and a few guys like that. But when I travel to the opens, you're kind of you're staying off by yourself. Maybe you're traveling with one or two other guys, and you don't really see many people. And I mean, I don't know that many people either. I mean, I'm from Minnesota. There's maybe <laughs> three guys that do it from Minnesota. Well, look at these. These Canadians, there's only a couple of them, too. <laughs> you. <did. laughs> well, they got lots of friends. No, yeah. I don't. I, I, I fish a derb around home. It's like, yeah, all you do is talk to your buddies, and it's totally different on the road. Like, you don't see many people. You fish from dark till dark, and you go back, and whoever you're staying with, you know, you talk a little bit, and then you're exhausted, and you get up and do it again. Yeah, dark till dark. Dark, dark till dark. Dark till dark. How about you, <laughs> Coop? Do you uh, do you associate with many opens competitors? Um, over the past couple of years, I've definitely met a ton of people, and it's pretty awesome how many people I've met. Bunch of great guys, and that's another thing I like about this whole derby fish. There's so many cool people within the industry. Um. But when I'm on the road, I'm, I do my own thing for the most part. I've never actually really roomed with anyone. I kind of just put the tent up, sleep in the tent and spend the week in the tent. And Oh, you clun it. You're, own. you're a clunner. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's called the clunner. I, don't know. I just like doing my own thing and just staying focused and, and not listening to dog talk. And good. I've learned more doing it on my own that way i've learned a lot from other people as well don't get me wrong but when it comes to derby time i like doing my own thing and just kind of blocking everything out and focusing on on what i want to make happen kind of thing that's awesome hey hey coop you know what clon used to do at the campgrounds like when he'd stay in it in the tents he would acclimate himself to the water so what he would do is he would um basically strip down to his his birthday suit and enter the water so he could feel as the fish were feeling. Now this actually, is, yeah, yeah. I, really? I, hey, I'm. This is a story of a legend I've heard. I'm not making this up. This is not I feel like I've heard that before, dude. I'm being we gotta, totally. We got to up our game, boys. Yeah, I'm, yeah. So I mean, you guys really, but you know, yeah. I guess once the dipstick goes under, you kind of tell what the fish feel like. You know what I mean? You can kind of get acclimated to what's going oh, that's on. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've heard that that story. Well, well, I'll ask Rick next time. I'll, I'll ask him if that really. I did. I'm. I've never asked him that, but I will ask him. I just kind of remembered it right now when you were talking camping. Hey, yeah, uh, Coop, is it hard for uh, Open Sky to get sponsors? Like amongst. Um, yeah, it's definitely not easy, and I mean, paying guys sponsors, are- money. I'm talking money, not product money. Yep. Yeah, it's it's super difficult. I mean. You even hear guys that make it to the elites. Everyone thinks you make it to the elites and you're you're set, and it's it's not the case. I've heard that from several different guys. Like you still gotta put in the work and figure out a way to make it work on both your ends, and that's the hardest part is trying to figure out a way that you can provide value to a company. And, and yeah, well said, Brad. Do you find it difficult to to um, procure sponsorship? Absolutely. It's super difficult with the opens angler. I mean, it's difficult with everyone right now. It seems to be a little tighter, but the opens, the one thing after, after you have some success in the opens, I think it gets a little bit easier because you're on a huge stage. I mean, it's still not the elite stage, but you're on, you're on a, you're on a big platform, you know, bigger than ever, bigger than ever. So it, it gets a little easier, but I think, you know, and it's all what you put into it. You know, if you're not, I mean, it, 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 it shocks me on how much time I spend a week talking to people and, you know, updating companies, what I'm doing, where I'm doing it and just keeping everyone happy. I mean, well, good. So you got to put a lot of work into it, but it's out there for sure. So what do we do about this? I mean, what, like, so 
let me ask you, uh, Jamie, you're, you're, you're trying to get into this position here. I know yep. you try and um, procure sponsorships for some of oh, your yeah. other endeavors, obviously. Yep. Um, like, what's the answer? How are Opens guys ever going to get sponsorship to help them get to the elites? Otherwise, it maybe just makes it a rich man's sport. But, like, I mean, it's kind of well, is. We know that it is. But, I mean, like... How do we ever get there then? How do we do this? I mean, I've seen it a lot over the years. Um, you know, people doing well in tournaments and then it, expecting companies to just hand them money and, you know, in lieu of, of good tournament finishes. Well, you know, we live in a in an age where you got to grind your ass off if you want a sponsor dollar. Um, you know, Coop said he's been sitting in his chair all day. He's been lube tubing. Yeah, he's editing, yeah, he's, he's been editing you know, his ass off. Yeah, he's he's going hard. I, you know, I do that as well, and it, you know, it's just uh, another level of grind. Um, so, and I I I feel like you kind of have to have your own, you know, you have to have your own chunk of the industry to kind of survive in this. Um, you know, I, I'm part of a small tackle company with my friend, Brian Gustafson, and, you know, we grind on that and, and, and grind for a lot of other companies and, you know, it's a ton of work. Uh, but if you kind of believe in that product, then, then you can make it happen. It, it's competitive as ever. And it just means you have to work harder and really kind of Gussie was the coach on that. Um, he might not get credit for it, but he's one of the hardest working guys I've ever been around. He's like the James Brown of Canada. He like Gus. He is. Yeah, his his yeah. work ethic is unbelievable. It really uh, is. You know, it, it could be something. He he he's not the most handy guy around the house. So he'll but he'll want to do something on his house. So he'll just like rake leaves for sixteen hours. <laughs> like he he is he's got a crazy work ethic, and you know is one of the one of the better guys where I'm at for procuring sponsorships. So you know I just kind of look at him and and try to follow his lead and. um you know, but I, as far as the total answer goes, I, I don't know. Just keep grinding, I guess. Yeah. I, here's what I wish. Can I tell you my wishes, guys? Yes. My wishes would be that opens anglers chasing Mr. Scott's dream had a easier way to get a few rubles in their pockets to help this thing along. And it goes back, Jamie, to when your when your buddy uh, Buff was on the show. And remember when um, when Brian Robinson said, in order for this to ever be a legitimate sport in the eyes of the public, um, besides the fishing community, we have to have one league. And mm. that was remember when Brian said that he said like so. In other words, right now, the money gets spread. Right, it gets spread all over the place, and then by the time that it's available for you guys fishing the opens, it's real thin. You know what I mean? Coop, you know what I mean. Yeah, yep, <laughs> Brad, you know what I mean. Absolutely. Um, so, I don't know. There's got to be something done about it. I, I would wish that you opens guys could get more money. That's what I wish. I, and, I, and, of course, based on performance. Based on performance. Like... I, like you were saying, Jamie, I'll automatically get a big check. But no, not get a big check. But now I'm gonna look at you, and now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna give you a chance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Coop won. Okay, I'm gonna give him a chance. Here's 175 thousand dollars in cash, Coop. Go ahead. That'd be nice, right? That'd be super nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Hey, um, I I want to get to know you guys a little better. We're gonna ask you guys some personal questions before. Uh, are you guys okay with that? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to get to get to know uh, get to know exactly how you guys think, and um, I don't know, just straight off the cuff. So just be honest about this stuff, okay? Oh, I like that, Ginge. That's uh. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, what's that Tarantino movie? Was that one? Yes, Pulp Fictions. It's kind of <laughs> like the Pulp Fictions. So, uh, hey, Jamie, give me your opinion on this, Brucey. The uh, Hi, 12 pounds a day. 
12 mm-hmm. pounds a day. Is that going to make you an elite series angler based on six to nine derbs? No. No. No, I keep hearing it. It's not true. It's not true. Coop? It's not true. Coop, what do you think? Yeah, 12 to 13, I think 100%. Oh, okay. Brad, what do you think? I think you'll make it with 12 to 13 pounds every day. All right, here you are. Well, Bra- Jamie, tell me. You're the uh, uh, you're the let's elephant. Look at, let's look at the um, Southern Opens. Go ahead. Oh, are we talking overall or for a division? No, I said six to nine. Six to nine. Yeah, six well, to six. What did 12 pounds a day get you at the James River? Kicking the um, ass, I, wasn't it? Yeah, you're yeah, right. I'm, ta- I'm talking like nine overall, nine tournaments. If you catch 12 pounds a day in the Centrals, Southerns, Northerns, obviously there'll be some tournaments. The James is a good fishery. I mean, Oneida last year, 12 pounds a day wasn't horrible. I mean, obviously when you go to Thousand Islands, you okay. better double it, but... Well, well, I mean, we'll settle this right now. What did 12 pounds a day get you at Cherokee Place or at Cherokee Lake? It was a triple digit finish for anyone who had 12 pounds a day. That almost automatically, mathematically puts you out of the running. So to say 12 pounds a day is going to make it is, is, is just not accurate. Okay. I respect that. Right. I respect that. The, you are the only person that has ever said no on that, Jamie, just so you know. Well, because I've only been to one open and it was a whack fest. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I'm a bass fishing nerd, and, and I look closely at it, and I truly believe it. Well, you know, lots of years, absolutely, but, uh, you know, the, the field's getting better. Everyone's, uh, you know, everyone's got forward-facing sonar. That's improving weights all over the place, and it's, I feel like the, you know, the threshold is, is higher. Okay. Setting the bar. I like it. I like it. You see that, Coop? He comes in one derb, kicks everybody's ass. He's like, yeah, 12 pounds, 12 schmounds. Yeah, well, it's because the rest of the year I'm not fishing. I'm sitting on my laptop looking at numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask the anglers. Ask the nerd looking at the charts. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Jamie, can I come on your show? I never ask anybody to come on podcasts, but I want to get on the net. I want to be on. Uh, I want to be on your podcast. Yeah, keep your phone on, bud. We'll give you a show one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I got to ask my ma first, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 12 pounds a day, bud. That's what I'm saying. 13 would do it, I think. All right, 13. He's got to go. He's up in, you know, six and 12, half dozen of the other. Don't look a gift whore in the mouth, Brucey. You know what I mean? 12, 13 pounds. I don't know what that means, but it's I don't either. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what it means. The uh you uh you gotta fish your strengths, I guess, Coop. I mean, in order to achieve success in these opens. You're trying He's to be good at everything. Is he good at everything? Oh. Yeah. Is he? Because he grew up catching buckets. He catching buckets, he's catching brown fish. He's doing all kinds of stuff. That makes him versatile, I guess, ain't it, Coop? I like doing it all for sure. Shallow smallies, deep smallies, deep largies, whatever. But, I mean, 100%, you got to fish your strengths. There's definitely a lot of stuff that I need to get better at. Um, Yeah, but, yeah, going into these tournaments, 100%, fish your strengths. And even, like, confidence is the biggest thing. Like, you might not be good at something, but you might have confidence in it anyway. So I think confidence is thing rolling into a tournament um like there's things that i'm not i don't i don't think i'm good at but i still have confidence in it for whatever reason yeah. um that'll get you laid at the bar too coop yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah but but no i think uh yeah fish your strengths and and i mean it's hard to it's hard to learn like the whole elite series thing if if i were to make the elite series two years ago and i fished the elites last year I mean, there's so much I have to learn still, and I don't want to be learning on the Elite Series, right? Yeah, but you will be. (laughs) (laughs) You got no choice. (laughs) You got to always keep learning. You know that. Yeah, that's the the cool. But I just mean, like, the basics and stuff that you need to know how to do. For example, sight fish and big largemouth is typically 
on the elites the first two or three events, you're going to be sight fishing up shallow for big buckets. So if you're not good at doing that, you best get good at it because once you, once and if you make it, that can kind of ruin your ear if you, you bomb in the first three events. And that's one of my weaknesses is sight fishing largemouth. So that's something I need to get better at if I ever do make it. It takes a lot of patience, don't it, Coop? Yeah. It really does. Hey, you um, just, you know, what's up? Go ahead, Pop? No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, we don't we don't get to do that here back home. And uh, no excuses, though. Chris and Corey, they, they're they amazing at it. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> they catch them. Those kids yeah. are nuts anyway. They're absolutely nuts. I mean, speak about techniques, man. Like, so, Brad, you know that, um, what's that magician's name? That guy that can that can hang in, like, midair. David Blaine or something? Yeah. Chris, yeah, something like that. Chris Angel, mind freak. That that's 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 Jamie Bruce. He's the he's like he but he does that with his baits. Like he does magic with these baits. And where a lot of guys are doing that hang time thing, that moon eye glide, that schmeltinator, the old schmeltinator. The, uh, that's the deal. <laughs> are you guys throwing the schmeltinator? Whatever. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why I went total Farley on that. But the uh, <laughs> what were we even talking about? No, okay. Smeltinators. Smeltinators, yes. So they have those at OmniaFishing.com, by the way. Did I say that OmniaFishing.com has the smeltinator? Did we know that? We do now. Hey, mm -hmm. so get this. Talk about learning techniques. This David Blaine guy over here, um, this Chris Angel mind freak guy. Brad, you learned a few things about that. That uh, hovercrafting moon eye hanging a minnow deal from Jamie Bruce. I know Cooper on the sneak sneak might have watched a few Jamie Bruce videos just to see. That's, what, what, that's what? not what happened. <laughs> Co Cooper showed up. He came to my buddy, my tournament partner, Brian Gustafson's house. He showed up in Cousin Eddie's 1974 Winnebago yes. waterfall yes. on one of his big road trips. Uh, you know, he came, these guys are nuts. He came with all his buddies. They're cooking spaghetti and meatballs on a, on a windy road and they Love show it. up and they're, they're here to fish for a few days in the fall. And, uh, uh, my buddy, Brian Gustafson, uh, he took him out and, and that's primo time here. And, uh, you know, I'm assuming that's when Coop got introduced to it and he's just such a hammer. He's just like, okay, I'll just put that in the playbook after one day. <laughs> and then, you know, wins the biggest derb of his life on it. Freaking John, so, man. I mean, Yeah. Yeah, you show him something once, you're like, it's over. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> a little something, something for the, for the back pocket. You know what I mean? But that's a pretty unique technique, Jamie. I mean, and a lot of people look up to you for it, and you do have a knack for understanding that technique. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and I mean, to be fair, I'm, I'm just the first guy talking to a GoPro that, and, you know, going to – a Southern tournament that's doing it. Uh, it's, it's something that's been developed for years, uh, you know, in our area. And there's, it, it actually started from guys fishing, uh, out of the back of the boat on a tiller. That's how everyone learns up here. And, wow. uh, you know, guys like Alex Kessler, Ted Stooner, uh, you know, the Linders, John Guzzi, a bunch of these guys back in the day, uh, just kind of learn this technique. And now when you're born into the, into the bass fishing community where you're at, it's like, it's like the northern equivalent to a spinner bait. You know, everyone knows how to use it, wow. and um, it's just something that that you know we've refined. Uh, Brian came up with the smeltinator jig head, and that just kind of upped the game. And uh, you know, it's what it's is something. that deal exactly? Like, what's special about that thing? It's, uh, I mean. <sighs> She's the goods, man. It came right from, <laughs> it's, it's like a bottle of vodka from Russia. Oh, wow. Like, you know, it's, okay. it's something good coming from people that know how to use it. And it, it's just been refined over the years. And, uh, you know, he, he really took it to the next level and, uh, it's, it's won more tournaments up here than probably any other bait and, you know, Gussie won on the river on, yeah. it's not an accident that people keep winning on this jig head. You can't just, it's. You know, it's not a huge difference in, in catching fish, but uh, it's, as you know, these small details, you know, 100% can, they do. can make a big difference. So um, that's the deal on the smeltinator jig. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, and, and winning is an understatement. Um, 
and cashing checks is an understatement on that that moon ideal. Um, at, at certain times, is it does it ever play into like I'm a dumb I'm a dummy when it comes to deep water. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Is like does it ever come into play with with bucket heads in the deep? No, 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 not really. I actually caught a couple on Cherokee on it, and I was like, oh. There's largemouth in this lake. I, I totally <laughs> forgot. So they, a few of them eat it down south, and once in a while it happens up north. But it's mostly a cold water deal. Like, we don't do it all year or anything. It's just a couple months of the year where it really shines. And, uh, you know, outside of that, we we got a regular bass fish. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm just – well, I guess, yeah, the season's closed, too, for you guys. But it might it, – it could be, like, a good early season bucket thing if you find a group of them. I mean, there, I don't know. There's only like six largemouth where I live, and they're all <laughs> shallow. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, they know. eat the smeltnator frog most of the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for real though, a lot of people are raving about that smeltnator jig headed. Again, all kidding aside, is available at Omnia. I haven't ever used it. I want to. Um, I want to learn how to uh, do that someday. And go fish. You can come up with me, Pat. I'm going up to visit him this fall. He's going to show me how to do it, too. I mean, we can yep. make a road trip. Yeah, I'm yeah in. it's true. I'm in. We'll do it. Okay. okay. You're yeah. in? Absolutely. If they let me through. It's on the books. <laughs> How's your record? I got a great record. Yeah, believe it or not, with these looks, I, got, I mean, I really do. I got a clean record. Yeah. So Perfect. I can go anywhere. I might, I might look a little rough around the edges, Coop, but I can go anywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> So don't worry, I'll well, come see you, Jamie. It's in the works then. <laughs> hey, 12 pounds a day ain't working, according to uh, Jamie Bruce. Hey, um, Brad, I got a tough one for you, all right? I need you to put your thinking cap on. You ready? I'm ready. Give me a line from a song. Give me a line from a song. <laughs> uh... I can't think of any. Oh, bah. Coop, give me a line from a movie. A movie? Yeah. Oh, I don't even remember the last movie I watched. Come on, Coop, give me a line from a movie. We're not very good contestants, eh? I can't believe you, Duds. Yeah, I believe that's you. Mr. Gilmore's gold jacket. <laughs> <laughs> good one, Bruce. <laughs> right, give me a line from a song, Brucey. Me? Yeah. Don't stop believing. Okay, hold on to Gussie's that feeling. Song. Yeah, Gussie song. That is the great Canadian snow leopard capturer, the wild child himself. He's a wilderness children. All you guys from up that North Country way are wilderness children. You really are. Something about you guys. Hey, Brad, check this out. To somebody that ain't a proper bassin man, like half ounce and three eighths are pretty damn close. But to a proper bassin man. There's a world of difference. I mean, there's a world of difference. And I need to ask you, when it comes to that chatterbait, when it comes to that jig, or when it comes to that spinner bug, what are you throwing more, three-eighths or a half? What are you finding? A 90% of the time, I throw a half ounce. Okay. I, I, I hear you. What about, what about you, Coop? What's more popular, three-eighths or one-half? I mix it up a little bit. If I had to choose, probably I'd say three eighths. Oh wow! Okay, okay, yeah. I gotcha. Okay, how about you, Jamie? I know it seems like a dumb question, but it's really an important question to me. That's a very good question. Uh, you know, our bass are generally pretty dumb, so I use a half. Okay, uh, just put it in front of one, and uh, you know, there's a new Z-Man little Mini Max. I'll use a three eighths in that because it's a little brick, but okay. yeah, I like it moving fast. <laughs> yeah, I and I I like the the half ounce jackhammer the majority of the time. I mean, that's just uh, and I think that's because I fish fast and that helps mm -hmm. me compensate for um trolling motor speed. That's you know, a real fast one, a half ounce jackhammer. I use the custom a lot, so that a half ounce custom is a lot slower than that. What's a jacky jack hammer? hammer? What is a jacky hammer? Do you know, Coop? What is a jacky hammer? A knockoff jackhammer. No, isn't it really a jackhammer though? But it's like a special one for real. Does anybody yeah. know? It's pretty dang close. I mean, the hook's different and the paint chips, but blades are identical. The hook, the bait keeper's identical. But is it made by the same company that makes the jackhammer in Japan? I'm not too sure. So I'm it's not, like I a fake Rolex 
Jamie. Basically, yeah, it's like yeah. buying buying fake Oakleys off the beach. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> our bunk weed in Jamaica and the beach. You know what I mean? Same thing. So similar, so different at the same time. Yeah, unreal, unreal. Okay, well, I just will clarify that for a minute. Hey, um, Brad, you got a bass that haunts you. It just haunts you. Like sometimes you close your eyes and that bass just haunts the hell out of you. You got one of those? Absolutely. Tell me, what's its name? Did you name uh, it? I call it Eddie the Bass. <laughs> it got away from me last year in the James, cost me the leads, but it was because I was lazy. <laughs> oh, well, accepting your your uh, your your shortcomings is part of growth. So, I like yeah, that. I like had all my leaders broke off, so I was like, I'm gonna just tie this three out hook to this small brain. And I mean, I watched Aaron Martin's do it on Bassmasters like 20 years ago and cost sure. him a, a tournament. And I like, I had that plane in the back of my mind. I hooked this stud down there and the hook came out. <laughs> Yuck. Done. Yeah. And that haunts you. Eddie haunts you to this day. Eddie haunts me for sure. Crazy. You got a haunter, Jamie? Me? Yeah. No. No. I've, I, I've heard that story from Brad a few times about the one on the James. And <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, you know, it cost him the elites and it was such a vivid story. It haunts me a little bit. That's all I yeah. think about. When I, I'm I hear haunted, haunted by it. Fish. I'm haunted by it. I'm, I'm moving on from this. I'm moving yeah. on. No, with, this with is that not being, a good vibe. <laughs> to make good stories. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that being said, Coop, you ever see the Sam Squanch in real life? I haven't. No? Never. Do you want you to? Huh? <laughs> did, did, what'd you say? Do I believe in it? You say Sasquatch? Yeah, Sam Squatch. Do you? Did yeah. you? <laughs> Have you caught? No, I want to though. We should go Sam Squatch hunting. I want to go. Yeah. So when I come up into Kanyata, I'll go over by you, and we'll go uh, Sam Squatching too. The uh, well, so w here's what you got to do. I don't know if you guys remember if you caught this episode with Drew Cook. Um. But Drew Cook was actually had a, a real life encounter with Sam Squanches. Like the thing came and sat down in their camp. Like, true story. So if you ever see Drew, he wouldn't even tell us all about it. Like it was like it was like he didn't want to talk about it, bud. Like Sam Squanch kept visiting them. For real. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that's a real thing. So if you guys see Drew, ask him about it. Maybe he'll tell you more in uh in person. You ever seen a Sam Squanch? You're way up north, Jamie. Yeah, I haven't. I've been looking, bud, but I haven't crossed paths with one. I get chirped all the time. People call me one, and um, but I, I haven't crossed paths. <laughs> <laughs> and I do like how you call it a Sam Squanch because I'm picking up on the Canadian comedy reference there pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. So, it's one of the best shows of all yeah. time. No, I'll give you a shout when I see him, bud, but for now, uh, he's not there. Lots of moose and, you know, bears stand up on their their hind legs. We've had the Sasquatch hunters up here. They've, you know, yeah. nil results, but they're trying. You ever seen Conky in the wild? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd run. I'd rather see Sasquatch. Yeah, Conky's a mean sob. He'll take your ass out. You saw yeah. what he did to Bubbles. Oh yeah. We're not having any of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh Coop, who, you, you're uh, 24 we figured that out you lost a few years and forgot about them but uh <laughs> we learned that at the beginning of the show but i gotta ask you in your 24 short years who's the original uh member of the uh the spank bank of the cooper galant spank bank like who's the first celebrity babe that you had a crush on bud first celebrity babe that i had a crush on yeah who would that have been Coop? I don't know, probably like a Katy Perry or something. Oh, okay. She kissed a girl and you liked it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see what you're saying. <laughs> hey, how about you, Brad? Who was your original OG crush? Oh, boy, that's been so long ago, Pat. I'm thinking one of those girls on Saved by the Bell. Oh, I like Popenga. Yeah, Ellie Kapowski. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that freaking Jamie Bruce is a character, I'll tell you. <laughs> hey, uh, 
uh, uh, Coop, you ever fall in love with a lure? I have. Yeah, me too. What, what, what yeah. one did you fall in love with? Uh, actually, the brand new X-Zone Hot Shot Minnow they just came out with because it helped me win a derb. Aha! Uh -huh. Help you win a few rubles. Oh, you love that bait. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's awesome. I could see how that could happen. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Brucey? You ever fall in love with a bait? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah, well, tell um, us. I like watching the Whopper Plopper plop a lot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. No, yeah. I, I, my wife throws that one a lot. She loves it. But yeah, I, I get a little bit chatterbait crazy and kind of, you know, run for a couple miles and probably throw it a little bit too much. Okay. When right. I shouldn't. All right. All right. How about you? How about you, Brad? What's a, what's a lure you just absolutely love? Uh, when the timing is right, I love the chicken more than anything. Your creation, still, of course. Yeah, I show Your a lot baby. of love for all the lures. You do what, Bob? I show a lot of love for all the lures. I mean, I'm, I kind of like doing it all. Okay, versatile. But I know yeah. you. I, I've watched some uh, some Brad Lightner chicken videos. You love that thing. I do. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's about here too so our timing is pretty good so in the next couple of weeks up here will be really good i'll be there too in the next few weeks by the way so. i yeah i hope so yeah. hopefully we can get out the boat with fighter and is matt coming or he's scared after he took one in the back of the head yeah he won't <laughs> if we're throwing chickens he won't come on the boat with me because i almost killed him he won't <laughs> he won't come if it's just a flip bite like if we're flipping milf he'll come on not, not anything with deadly not weapons. Chicken. Not yeah. chickens or treble plugs. None of that. <laughs> none, of, none of that going on. <laughs> hey, uh, of course you love the chicken in an amazing lure. I mean, it really is, dude. Pretty unique. Yeah. Pretty unique deal. Hey, Coop, you remember your first rod and reel combo that you were just super proud of? Like a super proud combo. Well, you bought it. You said, like... You want to see it? Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Of course. Nice. I love this kind of stuff. I save my stuff, too, downstairs. I like how Coop's got it. See the FLW trophies back there, Jamie? Mm -hmm. See this kid? He's flexing. Yeah. He's flexing. He's, okay. he's not afraid. No, oh, he earned he's it. He's been Durbin for like 10 years, and he's only 12. He's been Durbin <laughs> since he's two. He, can't find it, but I'll show you a gem. Okay. Yeah, so show us the gem. Is it a Calais 200A from 1999? I think so. Whoa, look at that, Coop. I like Not that. Cool. And look at that tubular or that solid glass rod. That's actually a the size on that bad boy. Holy cow. Yeah, that is a gem. And you can whip the horse's eyes with that when they misbehave. Looks like <laughs> yeah. it's carved out of whale bone. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's tusk, actually. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was going to get it and show you because it doesn't even have like a name on it. It's like a no name baitcaster reel. Yeah. I can't find it. Shit. Now it's the Cooper Gallant signature series. Vintage <laughs> edition is what, is what that is. Did you get that? Hey, didn't you go to Africa once, Coop? Yeah, I went, uh, it was about four years, four or five years ago. I went with my, my old boss. We went fishing for shark. We hunted. It was pretty cool. Heck yeah. You, you get that combo in Africa? Yeah. Your shark rod? <laughs> no, this one given to me by uh there it is right there. Oh, look at that. Okay. What is that? No idea. Huh, I can't make it out. Ginge, can you see what kind of reel that is? I don't recognize the handle. Yeah, it's different, eh? Yeah, it really is. Huh. Yeah, some uh a guy named Sean Taylor. Gave it to me. I was fishing down by my place here. We have a marsh, and I was just fishing off the bridge, and he came up, walked up to me, and gave it to me, and that's the first baitcaster I ever used. That's pretty awesome. It's cool that you still have it, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I like saving stuff like that. I got a shelf full of little things I save that, you know, everything kind of has a, a meaning to it. Yeah, it makes you feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. It reminds you of who you are and what you do. And uh, it's it's another Clun story. It's another reason that uh, Clun put his trophies away for for years, and then his his wife Melissa brought them out one day, and put them all out there in the room again. And, that's awesome. And she's like, "You need to look at these. You need to, that's you need to see these." And uh, 
and and Clun, that's his principle from that. And it reminds you where you come from. You don't live there, awesome. but it reminds you where you are. But yep. anyway, uh, yeah, awesome, dude. I love that you have that. I love that you have that. And uh, that just shows that you guys are uh, you're serious. Like to 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 be in love with a lure or to save a first combo or to even acknowledge your your OG spank bank <laughs> means that you <laughs> 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 means that you were a passionate person. Okay, that's what I am trying to convey, gentlemen. And your passion is conveying. On this road, on this chase, right? The chase, the dream, Jeez. chasing yep. the dream, you know, all that deal. Yep, like we were saying earlier, it's, it's like a needle in a haystack, but I mean, so many people have proved it between the Johnsons, Gussie, and going back to what we were talking about earlier, if you put your mind to something, if you go all in, and if you really want it that bad, and aren't scared, aren't scared of failing, and just kind of put your head down and, and, and enjoy it along the way. If you're not enjoying it, you're never going to make it. You have to enjoy the journey, and I think you have to be confident in yourself, and you can do whatever you want. It may take longer than you want, but I think it, that's the same thing with anything in life. If you want to do something, put, you, you put your head to it, you can make it happen. 100%, man. Keep your head down, run the ball, both foot in. That's it. That's it. It's going to happen. Yep. It's going to happen. You keep at it. Brad Lightning, nice. you're going to be an elite. Cooper? Yes, sir. You're going to be an elite. Jamie, I'm not sure about you yet. <laughs> <laughs> but Hey, I, I, I do want to say about these two, though. Um, you know, it's a needle in a haystack, but both these boys have the metal detector. Yeah, I get it. They're Good way it. to they put it. Taste it. I like that. Thank you, Lucy. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Brucey. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm never going to make it, so I got to drop inspirational quotes and hope my <laughs> podcast takes off. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't have me on. It'll never go anywhere. That's the that, Don't do that. But no, it's for real. You guys are freaking inspirational. Okay? You really are. Um, the, Brad, what you're doing, Coop, what you're doing, and Jamie, what you did in one tournament, whether you know it or not, is inspirational to many anglers. It really is. Maybe even more so than Coop's win. I mean, there's people that are like, holy cow, this guy came in and almost did it in a one shot. So, I mean, it's pretty special, all of it. And I thank you guys for, for coming on the on the show today. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward, Brad, to you having this, uh, this segment uh, once a month and bringing cool dudes like these guys aboard. I can't wait, buddy. And thanks, you guys, for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and um, we got a couple things to uh, do before we go. You guys want to stick around for a second. First off, I got to say, uh, Jamie, Coop, Brad, you guys can enter the half a spot online derp. Okay, I'm doing shameless sponsor plug right now, but literally, like, nice. you want to try and win a few bucks? You want to win some gas money? You can do it. And guess what? If you win the whole thing, you get to go fishing anywhere in the world. But you got to bring me. That's the thing. But we can go to Papua New Guinea and catch those fish that eat monkeys in trees. We can do that. That is possible. Uh, download the Half a Spot app today. Last thing of business. Here we go. You guys want to give away some uh, tin cup uh, whiskey, the official brown liquor of bass fishing? You guys yeah, want to do yeah. that? You want to do that together? You want to do that together? Mm -hmm. what, hey, uh, what? so... Uh, what what you got a you got a beverage over there, Jamie? You got a beverage handy coop? Anything? It can be anything. Yeah, Brad? I got a few Lee, Lee Levises here. Oh, look at you! <laughs> <laughs> I got some tin cup in the glass. Okay, okay, coop. You got any kind of beverage? You raise a glass with me. All right, there it is. All right, gentlemen, let us toast to success of all of you, to the success of every opens angler achieving trying to achieve the goal of Mr. Scott's dream. It's real. It's attainable. It's the needle in the haystack. But look at these guys. They're living examples. They're living the dream. Almost there. To you, we raise the love and cup and salute. Take a drink. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, fellas. There it is. Best of luck to everybody. Hey, you want to give away a 10-cup whiskey prize? Ginge, you got a, uh, you got a, uh, a winner? You got a wiener? We do. Okay. Hey, who do you text it to one of those guys? 
Just pick one of those guys and text them the winner. And then they're gonna, and then we'll give them some medieval uh, Game of Thrones stuff. And then they got to do like medieval accents. So pick pick a guy that you think would have the best medieval accent, Ginge. This is on you. Is it going to be Jamie Bruce, Cooper Gallant, or Brad Leitner? Who gets to announce the tin cup whiskey winner of the week in a uh, medieval Game of Thrones voice? Who's it going to be? Did you send it to somebody? Yeah. Oh, nice! I got. The well, text. I don't know these things. I. Oh. <laughs> Who'd you okay. say? Oh, it's it's you. Okay, it's yeah, you. it's me. Yeah, it's Brucey me. got it. All right, give him some music, Ginch. What we're gonna we're gonna. All right. What's up? What what are the stakes again? Ten cup whiskey. Yeah, ten cup whiskey. Uh, uh, five zillion dollar swag bag. All they had to do was like and share the live Facebook feed for their chance to win uh, uh, ten cup whiskey prize pack. Compliments. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. it's your lucky night, Dar- Daryl Wilson. Daryl Wilson. Uh, and and hey, I, I will say this. I'm going to throw in a Smeltonator starter kit from btfishing.com. Uh, Daryl, get your rods ready, bud. You're going Smeltonating. What? <laughs> and whiskey. You got to do them both at the same time, though. That sounds like a time. Smeltonating and whiskey. You know? Yeah. Coop, you Make get... sure you send me his address. I'll, okay, I'll, we, uh, we absolutely will. What's his name again? Daryl Darryl Wilson. Daryl Wilson. Okay, congratulations, Daryl, and thanks for liking and sharing the feed and and tuning in. And um and Brad, thanks, Coop, thanks, Jamie, thanks, thanks man. Guys. Appreciate thanks, it. everyone. Thanks, boys. That was fun. Yeah, as a yeah. good time. So every uh so win again real quick, and then Brad has to have you guys back on. <laughs> So, for sure. Yeah. So, the coop, you do that, and then and then Brucey, you win one, and then that guarantees you a slot again. Yeah. If I find Sasquatch, I'm coming back on too. Yeah. That's a guaranteed. <laughs> Sam Squanches are guaranteed ins. Uh, as long and and so is like if you could get like cool Canadian people, like um, uh, you you know like uh the members of Rush, you know the mm-hmm. surviving members of Rush, that would be cool. Um, like if Getty Lee came on or something, you know, Alanis Morissette. Ala- okay yes, because she goes down in movie theaters. Yes, thank yeah. you. We need that. Okay. We need that. Nice. Yes, I'll call her up. but all that, all that <laughs> stuff. So anyway, this has been another <laughs> Andrew Ellenberger, the Ginger Ninja production of Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. This is the glorified version of a Bass and Talk Show. I'm your host Pat Renwick. Ginger, let's get out of here with all three of these guys. And uh, let's uh, sail away on a thin raft of Bassin. What do you say? Let's do it. Bass Galaxy, we thank you for joining us on this thin raft we call Bassin. Someday, as we paddle across this great ocean in this Bass Galaxy, we look for Mr. Scott's dream and the achievement of grandeur. Thank you for everyone that makes Stray Cast possible. And thank you to all you guys for coming aboard tonight. Coop, Jamie, Brad. Thanks for the entire Bass Galaxy for tuning into this nonsense every week. Thank you, TH Marine Supplies. I get jacked up with an Atlas jack plate. I don't know about you guys. Omnia Fishing. <laughs> they got the Smeltinators. Did you know that? Where else do we get Smeltinators, Jamie? Where else? BTFishing.com. BTFishing.com. Yeah. There Use it is. promo code get the net. Save another 10 points. <laughs> Daryl's already got some coming. He's <laughs> fired up. You know what my code is? OTPHJ. Over the pants hand job. Put that in. <laughs> you get 25% off. It adds, adds 10% to Adds the 10%. Uh, I power pull down for pleasure, in case you can't tell, and I float on a crest liner. Abu Garcia Berkeley, thank you for this... Uh, support of this show and uh, I, I lightened up with Impulse Lithium. I'm pretty happy about it. Half a spot official. We told you all about them. Download the app. Bravarni son of swim jigs. What? Damn Bravarni, thanks for making an amazing swim jig. Bite me tackle. Get the lead out. Amphibia eye gear. That's how I'm throwing shade. Alpha Angler. It's a great Brandon Palinix rod company. Pretty exquisite rods actually. Tin cup whiskey. The official brown liquor of Bassin. It's Chikawa fishing. Deadly. Poisonous. Hooks and Sims. From my gotchis to my britches. Sims. Thank you. Bass Galaxy, I'm Pat Renwick. I bid you peace. And peace I bid you. Gentlemen, win opens. Achieve success. Become elites. Damn it. You are someone. Peace. Hey. This is nonsense. I'm out of here. Love you guys. Brad, I'm looking forward to this segment. Coop, keep kicking ass. Jamie, I'm out of here. 
Thanks. Love you all. Peace.